In a moment, we're going to meet with the Canadian artist Chris Klein. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe and ring the bell, give it a like, and share the link with your friends. And now, today's show. Hi, my name is Alan Gorman. About 10 years ago, I decided to pack it in and become a full-time working artist. Now, not only do I get to do what I love every day, but I've also had the opportunity to show a lot and meet some extraordinary and talented people in my travels. And today, I'd like to introduce you to one of them. Andy Warhol once said, in the future, everyone's going to have their 15 minutes of fame. And this show is about giving my friends their 15 minutes. If you'd like to see some of my work, please visit www.alangorman.com. But today's not about me. It's about supporting one of the people I respect and entertaining you. So please join me now for today's episode of Alan Gorman's 15 Minutes of Fame Art TV Show. Today's guest is Chris Klein. Um, Chris and I met when I co-curated a show at uh, the Nicole Longnecker Gallery in Houston, Texas, and I invited Chris to be in it. It uh, was called uh, Industrialism in the 21st Century. And for some reason, I have no idea why, we kind of hit it off and uh, become friends. We're friends, right, Chris? Um, I guess so, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, so Chris, this is Chris Klein. Uh, so, uh, Chris, I, I, you know, we're, we're going to have an interview today. You were born outside of London? Yes, uh, a North London suburb called Fulham Wood. And you told me that it was uh, near um, a, a movie studio? There is the Elstree Film Studios, which um, is quite a famous studio, yeah. The, the original three Star Wars were made there, the Indiana Jones. What I'm, what I'm getting at is how did you get into this uh, business of uh, making art? All my um, siblings were quite artistic. They all taught me a little about drawing. Drawing was my thing until I was a teenager. I had my first show when I was 17 and sold a painting, which was a fantastic feeling. But it was just a show in the city hall, the local city hall, and my dad helped me because he painted as well. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't that great an artist. He was just a hobby painter, but he helped to have the show with me to boost my confidence. So, uh, so what was the painting of that you sold? It was a landscape, just a... Um, Quite a minimal, misty scene on a beach, very foggy. I love fog. You don't have to put much into it, and it gives it lots of atmosphere. You yeah. just see gentle waves lapping over the sand. My parents didn't give me lots of encouragement for art. They always would say, you, know, you need to get a proper job. So I worked for a long time in management and in the, uh, the motor trade as we say in England, um, the automobile industry. So I was doing that for many years. Um, always painting as a hobby, having quite a few small shows that I organized myself. And that was, that was all landscape stuff? Mainly landscapes. And in the, the motor trade, I got small and more contacts in the, the, um, the racing side. Even my neighbor where I worked, was um, an old racing driver and he used to race with people like Fangio and Sterling Moss. Mm. So it was interesting. And I got to know a, a Le Mans driver and so I started to paint cars and I used to get the team to sign the cars from me. All my photorealist. So w were your landscapes kind of realistic too? Yes. I like more of the, the loose abstract look as well, but um, although I try that, I always end up drifting back to realism. It's, I guess it just comes naturally to me, so. Well, even the ones that I saw that were in the Nicole Longnecker show have a kind of a abstract compositional uh, 
flavor to them. I, I do like that. I take loads of photos in um, the salvage yards, and when I start looking through the photos, I can see something going on in the corner, and I like to crop very tight to get um, a nice composition that looks good. It doesn't have to be recognizable for what it is. It's um, right. Yeah. Like an abstract feel to it. Yeah. I, I, I think we're similar that way because uh, you know my, agree, yeah, my, my, my my paintings aren't about the subject matter. I don't really That's care. That's why I love your work yeah. so much. It, it's very similar. Yeah. yeah. So early on, uh, uh, I understand that you 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 did work at the, at the movie studio. You did a good job there. A friend of mine worked in the film studios at Pinewood, which is kind of very famous. Pinewood. Yes. Oh, heard. well, that's everybody started that. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he was, I think, a stagehand. And he used to encourage me, saying he would um, try to put my name out there. And he got me an interview with um, quite a famous and successful um, head scenic painter mm -hmm. who worked on um, some of the Bond films. I'm trying to think of his name. <laughs> I should have prepared this. Um, but he got me an interview, so I went to Pinewood. And at that time, him and his team were painting uh, a film called Beyond Rangoon. So I met him on the set, and it was exciting for me because I saw paintings, realist landscape paintings, um, you know, 50 to 100 feet across with a team of people painting them. And I'd never really thought of that before, but I thought, wow, I'd love to be a part of something like that. Well, you can't use a little tiny brush with that, right? No, you can you, you use brooms and mops. For <laughs> each, for and yeah, I took some of my small paintings in this size of realist paintings, and he thought they were fantastic. And he said he'll be able to find you some work on his next film, which was a Bond film, but he never called me. I didn't have his phone number. You know, these people are hard to track down. You can't just walk into the film studios because of security. So I, um, I started to try to track him down and see if there's a way of contacting him. And my local film studios at Elstree, I heard there was a scenic painter working there. So I spoke with him and he said he actually doesn't work for films. He paints for theatre, but he's based in the film studios. But he said he's very busy. Maybe in a, a few weeks I should contact him and he'll come and meet, meet up with me. But then I felt a hesitation because he was about to put the phone down. And he said, are you local? I said, yes. So he said, do you want to pop straight over and bring me some work and show me what you were able to do? And, and we'll take it from there. So I was there within half an hour, I think, showed him some paintings. And he said, I wanted to see if you were a good, competent person to draw, because I need someone for drawing at the moment. So I was working with him the next day on um, a theatre show for the Royal Opera House called The Merry Widow, designed by Richard Hudson, which is a very famous um, designer mm -hmm. from England. And this show was going out on national television. Do they, do they, uh, do they work like a, like a traditional realist, where they project the image and, and uh, draw mm -hmm. it out? Occasionally you project, but you'd have to suspend the projector from the ceiling, which people do do, but Generally, it's traditional. We grid a small maquette this size, then we put meter square grids on the floor, and it's often it grid, like like you're gridding out a, 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 a yeah. mechanic. Yeah. Then from that, you plot all the points, and then you freehand sketch each meter square. Yeah, it's easy, easier to work in a little box than it is on the whole yeah. thing. So, uh, uh, do you do that now? You still do that now? I don't, I, I tend to project and sketch out. It's just so, so much time. And yeah. I've been gridding for m so many years, but once you can get a good projection. Uh, did you enjoy the, the uh, scenic painting? Very much. Um, I was quite passionate about it. In England, I did some very big shows for London's West End. Well, like I even did work for Disney that shipped the work over. I worked on 
some curtains for the Lion King for a few different shows. And um, I did some other touring shows for Cameron Mackintosh. I did some shows for um, the theatre in New York, um, Radio City, which is supposed to be the largest theatre stage in the world. Yeah, it's the largest stage in the world. Yeah, so how do you, how do you segue into, the, into, into what you're doing now, the costume? I married a lady from Montreal and she had two children. So we were deciding whether she would live with me in England or I would come to live in Canada. But um, they weren't very competent, the two girls in English at that time, they were French speakers. So mm. I decided I'm very flexible. I could come and live in Montreal. And the theater is quite small in Montreal. So that was a bit disappointing, but there's a very big film industry. So as soon as I came over, I contacted a few people and almost immediately I started painting backdrops for films, which I was pretty competent in doing. And then I worked my way in with the mother set designers on, and head painters and started to paint on the sets of some quite big Hollywood films. The last production I did was actually a TV pilot, which was a couple of years ago, which still hasn't gone out on television. But that was the last uh, production I worked on for TV or film. And I finished with my theatre two years ago at the National Arts Centre in Ottawa because I needed to paint full time. I, my career seems to have exploded recently. And I just got represented by Bernarducci Gallery in New York and he wanted to give me a solo show. I mean, would you say the, these, these costume paintings came from your gut? What, what inspired you to do this? Um, it was when I was the head painter in Stratford in Ontario. Our paint shop, which was a, a beautiful paint shop, very large space was right next door to the costume warehouse and they're fortunate to have one of the largest costume warehouses in Canada. The, the costumes going back from Roman times to contemporary, there are thousands and thousands to have on two levels. So I started taking photographs of them and when I'm at home looking at the photos thinking what can I do with these, I just thought I'd have to paint some of these. I was in my mind thinking two or three paintings maybe and seeing how it goes. And that has never stopped. And Stratford still dominates what I paint. The, the large painting thing you see here, this is from a show at the Stratford Festival and the School for Scandal. They've got an amazing collection and I think I'd like to keep going back there for quite a few more years yet. Everybody tells me it's something that uh, they've never seen done before. Not and people have painted costumes hanging, and I see them occasionally over many years, but to specialise in theatrical costumes, and I'm trying to work on some sets from films and television, as well as other collections from fashion. Two years ago, I was in the um, Victorian Albert Museum in London, taking photographs of some of their collections. And I also was invited to the Royal Palace's um, ceremonial collection in Kensington Palace, which was Princess Diana's old palace. So you, are you going to give us a, a, a behind the scenes of uh, the Queen before, we, uh, before she goes? Um, she was hiding from me, yeah. Wow, well, well, I, I just want to see her underwear. Uh, <laughs> I think it's from Victoria's underwear. But, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> so I did take some photos of Queen Victoria's clothes as well, which is something I might get a chance. Oh, Queen Victoria's clothes was amazing, right? Yeah. She, she was quite a, a, a fashion plate. Yeah. In her later years, she always, always wore black. But when she was younger, some of the things she had, the dresses were incredible, very colourful. Yeah. What, what, what's your... 
your crowning achievement to date? What are you, what are you really proud of? It's difficult to pinpoint exactly which stands out. There's a few. One of them would have been um, Walt Disney Commission last year. Uh, Lion King, I okay. think? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, Tom Schumacher came to my show in New York and um, we met. And once he saw my show, he told me that he was planning something for the Lion King's 20th anniversary for London. But when he saw my work, it made him get some other ideas. So he said he would be in touch, or his vice president would be in touch with me. So within a few weeks, I started to um, get emails and, and conversations with the Walt Disney team. And that led to uh, a painting, which is still one of my favorites, of the Lion King costumes. Well, there's such, there's such wild costumes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they actually placed it on the front cover of the behind the scenes brochure, or behind the curtain brochure, for their London anniversary, the 20th anniversary. So that's quite something. But there are other- Talk, 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 talk about, talking about behind the curtain, do you have a, a do you take process uh, shots of, uh, do you let people behind the curtain, let's see them? See what you're um, doing? I, I do take a few in progress shots, but very few. And it's normally just um, my wife takes a photo of me posing with a paintbrush against the painting. In I, I, I've seen those. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good, actually. A couple of times I've taken the little movies of me working on some detail. Uh -huh. Normally I don't put them out because I'm thinking, oh, I, I shouldn't have put that line there and it will make me look stupid. So. But, uh, is there anyone? out there that you know of who kind of on, in your wheelhouse now? I sometimes see pieces that make me think it's, it's on similar lines as what I do, but generally these artists do lots of other work as well and they just do a couple of costume pieces hanging as part of their repertoire. I've never seen anyone specializing in painting costumes and so, not, certainly not specializing in theater or film you know, fashion collections yeah so they're so they're just one-offs no nobody nobody's kind yeah. of taking yeah. it as their signature yeah because yeah, this is a signature yeah. thing for you um and, and where do you see it going where, where do you, where do you, what's in the future for that for or for this every project i do seems to open more doors for me so i want to do some more um theatre shows, some of the big shows from Broadway and West End. You need a lot of permissions for that. You know, it took me over a year, maybe a year and a half to get permission to paint some of the Phantom of the Opera. And I had to go to London in the end and meet some of the people who got the copyrights and the, um, some of the team from the RUG, the really useful group, which is Andrew Lloyd Webber's company. And also we checked in with Cameron McIntosh's team as well, just to make sure that everybody is okay with it. I, the last thing I want to do is tread on someone's toes and have Andrew Lloyd Webber's lawyers trying to sue me. I need to know that everybody's happy with what I do. So I've got some great ideas that I'm planning on, but I'd rather not discuss those because if I haven't got the permissions, you know, I don't like putting out there. I think it's sort of bad luck. No, oh, but by that, okay. How about, um, do, you wish you, do you have any desire to do anything else? In painting, yeah. I'd like to- or an, art, or an art, I mean, mm -hmm. you're an artist, so. You know. you know what, I've done some poppy portraits, pop arty kind of portraits, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed painting everything. I love landscapes, I like to do more. I love painting racing cars, and I'd like to do more. Um, but there's only limited time, right? Yeah, I, I'm making a living from painting now. So as there's such a demand for the costumes and the galleries are now screaming at me because I am fortunate that they've sold them quicker than I've been able to paint them. I've just got a gallery in San Francisco now that's going to um, show my work. And the painting you see here is going to be shipped out to them next week. I think that's a good, I think that would be a good market for you. 
Yeah. Or, or, so or, I haven't got much choice but to paint costumes at the moment, but I really would like to find a bit of spare time and paint other things and even try and experimental stuff again. I love to paint abstract. And I love textures. Um, but that's, so, that's so, so back back to the uh, costume paintings uh, uh, off the top of your head. Uh, what, what what are your favorite three? Uh, that's impossible to say, Alan. Um, well, always, when I've just finished a painting, almost always, as I've just finished, it's my favorite. So the one behind me. I've just varnished it, and at the moment I keep looking at it, thinking that's my favourite. Well, we'll move aside so we can see a little bit of it. So. I'll move the camera a little. And uh, they're the costumes from uh, School for Scandal, which is a classic play, seventeen hundreds written. Yeah. Um, so that's from the Stratford Festival again, from their warehouse. Looks like you're a pretty good photographer. Are those are those shot in a dark, dark, dark? No, no, it's quite a busy background. I, I just so you you black you black out that. I loosely black it out in Photoshop, just to help me visualize. But then when I paint it, I I perfect it. And then what about the lighting and the shadows and the folds and stuff like that? Because that kind of looks natural. It, yeah, I'm, that's come from years of experience now painting and the costumes, it's much more dramatic. And what's behind you, Chris? That's that's another painting from the Phantom of the Opera. That one will soon be complete. And that's um, the dress worn by Christine for the um, the masquerade. And there's actually two dresses there. But um, in the dressing room at the um, Her Majesty's Theatre in London, I, they've, they've got the, um, the two ladies that played that part, okay, so uh, there's always two of everything, so I laid out both the dresses and took lots of photographs, so that's the two dresses, although you'd only ever see one person wearing it. Oh, hey, so here's where you get to put in a little plug for yourself. Um, where, where can people see your work, and what do you got coming up, and... Um, uh, what do you want people to know? And okay, so uh, what, are you, what are you giving shows. away? You giving away any paintings? Or? Not at the moment. No, I've got two shows opening. One has just opened in Ontario at the the Gora Gallery in Stratford. She has a couple of my paintings, my costumes, and some of the um, salvage arts paintings. And she has one of my Phantom of the Opera paintings. And Hopefully, the beginning of August, the San Francisco Gallery will be opening. That's CK Contemporary. Um, they have a brand new space, and they're going to have my masterpiece here, the large painting. I'll be shipping it next week. I'm just hoping, with the COVID, there's delays in shipping, but um, I'm hoping that they'll have that at the beginning of August. And I've also got some work in Anthony Brunelli Fine Arts in Binghamton. That's in New York. They have several of my paintings, including a couple of my favorites that uh, you can come and see. Um, my website is chrisclone.com. Um, and uh, social media? Social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. If you just key in Chris Klein Art, you should be able to find me. And what do you, what do you think the next year is gonna hold for you? There's a chance I might be doing a group show um, in Taiwan, I'm talking with the gallery, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I'm also talking with um, a film director about um, costumes of a very famous designer called Aiko Ishioka, and I'm talking with her widow as well because she passed on. But she won an Oscar for. Um, some films, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula film. So I'm really trying to um, access some of her costumes and create a painting from it, which would be nice. And more than one I'd like. She did some amazing stuff. And also fashion. I'm talking with a couple of other fashion designers about painting some of their costumes. Well, uh, have any 
museums acquired your work yet? Uh, Not yet, no. Um, I was going to be in a museum show in Washington, D.C., but that was cancelled because of the virus. Right. So I did put out an, an online show. Also, I did get to one museum collection, although it's a private collection, but I think it's, he's going to put it into a museum. At the moment, it's the largest private collection of costumes in the world. A very important question. Yeah. I did one painting initially of one of his costumes, which you actually own, Alan. So that's oh, all right. Cool. And uh, uh, yeah, that, that that's a costume. That was um, we thought it was folk costumes from uh, yes. Russia, but it turned out it was ready ready to wear from the twenty. Yes, <laughs> a rich, rich um, lady it from St. Petersburg. Right. It, actually, it's it's. I love that painting. So one of my one of my one of my uh, prized possessions. So, okay. Well, thank you, Chris, for being on Fifteen Minutes of Fame, and uh, I wish you a lifetime of fame. And thank uh, you very much. And, and you too. Uh, yeah. Well, I wish both of us a lifetime of fame. Congratulations <laughs> on your fame. before before we die. It'd be nice to know that somebody out there likes us. So. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll we'll cut this uh, together, and um, and um, be seeing you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please leave your comments and uh, subscribe, and also sign up for my newsletter at www.alangormanart.com. This way, you'll never miss another episode of Alan Gorman's. 15 Minutes of Fame Art TV Show.